everybody, in this video I'm going to create a web scraper in JavaScript using Node.js and Puppeteer. I'm also going to use a package called Colors that's going to colorize the console log outputs as this is a console app. So everything that we scrape from the web is going to be uh, output in our terminal to show us uh, what we're actually getting back. This particular use case is actually going out to a website of a product in this particular instance like a silver coin, right? So there's several different websites that sell the same product. So I wanted to go out and scrape pricing and then be able to, at a glance in the terminal, compare prices among several different uh, websites rather than navigating to all these websites and writing it down and things like that. So with my terminal open here, I'll show you one that I already created. And this, this goes to four different websites. And so if I run that script, we'll see four different lines here from four different websites with four different prices. And at a quick glance, I can see that SD Bullion has the best price on a 2021 ounce American Silver Eagle Brilliant uncirculated coin. Furthermore, each line is colorized to its own color, so it's much more legible and easier to read. I've got the pricing element that we've actually scraped, but I've also added the static string values with the description to make things much more meaningful in this application. So without further ado, let's get started. So here's the website we're going to scrape. This is JM Bullion, and I've gone to this um, section here for this one product. I've gone to this URL here. We're going to need that for our application. And we're also going to need this element here. So I'm looking for this price for, let's say, one. If you bought one coin, it's going to be this quantity here. So it's going to be this first row. It'll be this last column if you're going to pay for by credit card or PayPal, something like that. And what I'll do is I'll right-click on that price because I want to actually get the information for the DOM element. So I'm going to go down to Inspect, open up the uh, Chrome DevTools. I'm in Chrome. And with that... Um, done it's going to highlight the actual dom element here you see this blue band here in the middle of the page and it's got that price thirty dollars and eighty cents if i right click on that go down to copy and then go down to copy x path we're going to take that information and put it in our application here shortly and that's how puppeteer is actually going to go out and get this element and bring it back to us so real quick what is puppeteer puppeteer is a node library which provides a high-level API to control Chrome or Chromium over the DevTools protocol. It runs headless by default. What that means is it'll run without actually opening the Chrome um, or Chromium browsers visibly to the user and go out and fetch the information, fetch the DOM element, and bring it back. So if you go here to npmjs.com, uh, you can read more about it. I'll actually leave a link in the description below the video here. Uh, for you to go check that out. And then there's a cool little link here. Let's give it a spin. You can, if I right click on that and uh, open it in the new tab, it's this try puppeteer.appspot.com. It has a little like um, code editor here that you can kind of play around with. They're using the screenshot method. We're going to be using a different method that's going to apply to um, grabbing the X path from the website that we're scraping. Uh, but in this particular case, if I go up here to this await page.go to, uh, method. I'm going to put in, let's say, www.toddbrannon.com, and we'll click on this Run It. And what it's done here, you can see, is it's taken a screenshot of toddbrannon.com, my website, and that's just one of the many things that Puppeteer can do. So it's a cool little uh, way to kind of get more acquainted with Puppeteer. All right, so I'm going to hop back over here to my terminal, and I'm going to make a new directory, and I'm going to call it get price. And then I'm going to cd to that directory. And now I'm going to initialize my application. That's npm init. And then I'll just hit enter all the way down. And now I'm going to install Puppeteer. That's going to be npm i Puppeteer. And this will take a few minutes to uh, download and install. All right, so now that that's installed, I'm going to go ahead and install colors. All right, let me clear that. So now I'm going to open VS Code. It's going to be code space dot. And I can go to my package.json file and see my dependencies here. I've got colors and puppeteer, so we're looking good there. The next thing I want to do is create a new file. That's going to be get price .js. 
All right, so the first thing I need to do is require Puppeteer and Colors. And now I'm going to go ahead and enable Colors. And so just real quick note, what Colors does is allow you to, um, as you saw earlier in the video, to actually change the font color of the text of the console logs. It can also uh, allow you to add colored backgrounds as well. Uh, but then it also has some fun little colors like rainbow changes colors for each character it's not more it's really not about readability so much as it's I think it's just kind of a fun thing so now I need to create an asynchronous function and this function is going to have a single parameter and that's going to be our URL alright so what the asynchronous function is going to allow us to do it's going to allow us access to the await keyword so um, there's going to be a lot of things throughout this function that we're going to have to wait to execute before we can go on to the next thing. First thing I need to do is declare a constant browser and assign it to a wait for the launch of Puppeteer. So now I'm going to declare a constant page and that's going to await um, a new page to open in the browser. And once a new page opens, we can actually go to the URL. So this will be await page.goto URL. So with that said, let me go ahead and beneath the function, let's create the function call. So it'll be get price. And let me go back over to our site in Chrome. Grab that URL, copy it, go back over to our text editor and let's paste that in. And I think I missed a quote mark here or something. All right, so good. So this is our function call, and this is our URL. That's our argument. And so now let me get back to the function. The next thing I need to do is create our, uh, declare a constant for the element. It's actually going to be an array that refers to the, to the DOM element where the product price is found on the web page. So I declare that by typing const, and then in uh, square brackets, it's going to be el. And that's going to equal await page dot dollar sign x. So what dollar sign x is, dollar sign x is a method provided by Puppeteer. And it's a selector that allows me to select an element from the web page I am uh, referring to here by xpath. And so let's go back over to Chrome. And then I'm going to right click on that element where that price is again. I'm going to click on ins inspect. Now I'm going to hover over this like blue band where that DOM element is and I'm going to go down to copy and then go down to copy XPath and click that. Now I'm going to go back to my text editor and I'm going to paste that XPath in this uh, argument here in this parameter. All right. So now that we've got that, that'll grab the element. Now I can pull the text from that element. Once I have the text from the element, I'll use the JSON value method and assign the value to a uh, price constant. All right, so now that I have the price constant, I can actually create my console log. Then I'm going to go ahead and make sure the browser is closed. All right, I'm going to save this. I'm going to open up my integrated terminal here in Visual Studio Code. Then I'm going to run it by typing node get price. All right, so now we've console logged our price. We do have a little bit of a problem here. It looks like there's some leading spaces or tabs or whatever that we've picked up along the way. I can use a text method to trim that down. So let me do that real quick. And let me save that. And let's try it again. All right, cool. So that works. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add this uh, static text string. JM, is that right? JM Boolean 2020. One ounce silver eagle bu and colon close the uh, quotes and the plus to concatenate the two and now let's take a look at how this looks. Let me save that. Let me run it again. All right, cool. So we have this uh, description here. It's a lot more meaningful to us. Uh, we know what it is and we know where it comes from. Now let's go ahead and implement the colors package here. Let's start with the price constant here. I can do this by dot and then adding the color. So if I start typing, you'll get an IntelliSense. Well, I should have, but I guess it doesn't show up. I know there's a cyan color. Actually, I'll leave, um, 
I'll leave a link to the colors package and the information about it in the description below. You can read up a little bit more about it, what colors are available and things like that. Then I want a different color for my actual static text string. So I'm going to add a dot after that uh, quote and then I'll use magenta. And you can see it here in the IntelliSense. I don't know why the cyan didn't show up, but I know it is available. So I'm going to save that and then I'm going to come down here and run this again. All right, cool. So now we have our colorized version of our console log. So we scraped the site for the price. You could do some really cool things with this in JavaScript. You could add a timestamp. I've done that before. You can add a timer. If you want this to run like every hour or let's say every couple of hours or every day and you want to uh, keep an eye on the price I've actually done that before so there's a lot of things you can really do with this so um, you could actually uh, pass this into a, a database or pass these scraped values into a database uh, it's a lot of fun it's got a actually a really cool use case and I hope it's piqued your interest if this is something new to you it's real easy to get started if you know a little JavaScript I hope you enjoyed it I hope it's uh, been sort of meaningful to you and you've learned something please leave a comment below if you got any questions I would love to hear from you and I'll try to answer questions as best I can if you've done this before and you would have done it differently I would love to hear your input or your feedback I'm always up for learning more and for sure please subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification button so you'll get the notifications when I upload new videos thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day